Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. Many know the acronym DCF and typically think of this in terms of protecting families with small children, but they also cover our seniors through Adult Protective Services Division. Helping Seniors TV host Carrie Fink talks with Teresa Russell about when to call the Adult Abuse Hotline and all related. I'm Carrie Fink and welcome to Helping Seniors Television. Thank you, viewer, for joining us. I have the privilege of sitting in for our president and founder, Joe Steckler, today. And our guest today, you're really going to enjoy this show because you're going to get a lot of information. But our guest today is Teresa Russell, who works with the Department of Children and Family Services. And welcome. Thank you. And what might be surprising to you, I know it was surprising to me, is I always think of DCF as being the organization that looks after children. But there's a separate division called Adult Protective Services, and that's the part that we're going to talk about today as it pertains to seniors. So welcome to the show, and I want to, maybe that's a great place to start, because if you're like me, you may not have understood that there is an Adult Protective Services division. Can you tell us about that and what that and what, what you do in that part of it? Absolutely. Um, it's, it's pretty common. I can't tell you the number of times we've knocked on a senior's door and a uh, Someone introduces themselves as being with DCF, and there we don't. There's no kids here, and shut the door. Oh wow! So yeah, it's it's educating the public that adult protective services exists. There's actually two sides to the adult protective services house, if you will. There's the investigation side where we do um, investigate adult abuse, neglect, and exploitation of anyone who is qualified as a vulnerable adult. So someone over the age of 18 who has some kind of impairment that affects their abilities for their activities of daily living. And then um, we also have a services side to the house to help people kind of navigate through the different agencies and services that are available in the community to help them. So that's the two sides of Adult Protective Services. And, you know, I know you because of the work that you do, for example, with World Elder Abuse Awareness Day and all the things that are connected to that. Uh, in fact, you do a big annual community fair every year, and you do lots of seminars that you help organize uh, through the Brevard Commission on Aging and with mm -hmm. partnerships with uh, Triad and several others, where you're really intent on getting information to uh, people about the problem of adult abuse, you know. Here's a question: Somebody may not really be familiar with that term, or the or the only thing that they might think would be a physical abuse. But there's a lot more to all of that, isn't it? Absolutely. There's mental abuse, um, psycho. That's under your psychological. There's a financial abuse. There's isolation. There's harassment of someone, bullying someone. Mm. Those will all fall under abuse. It's that um, manipulation, intimidation of someone to get control over them, be it them personally, their house, their assets, whatever it is. And this is the area that uh, DCF, Adult Protective Services, is concerned with, is trying to protect these citizens. Correct. We're um, our Purveying is under um, Florida State Statute 415. Mm -hmm. So that's what sets out our guidelines as to when we can investigate something. So that gives a question. So, because this is often a topic that may come up, uh, particularly with helping seniors, uh, we have the county's uh, Senior Information Helpline. So that's a free call viewer at 321-473-7770, 321 Four seven three seven 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 zero, and I'll take a quick sidebar to explain that uh, we get calls from uh, people literally all over the county and occasionally all over the United States who have a concern about something that's going on uh, related to a senior. Um, a lot of times, it's it's things related to I just need transportation. It may be a medical question, a legal question, or things like that. But occasionally, when does it get into that? adult abuse where somebody should be giving you guys a call? If you have any concerns that someone is being abused, neglected, or exploited, um, you don't have to investigate it yourself. In fact, we prefer you don't. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you can call the abuse hotline, which is 1-800-96-ABUSE. Say that one more time. 1-800-96-ABUSE. The hotline will take it if it meets the criteria under 415, then they will pass it down to the county office who will then get it to a specific investigator. Within 24 hours, a protective investigator will be out to see that person face to face. And what kind of calls come in? I mean, it sounds like it's touching on several different areas. Um, it is. It has to do, again, any, it's not for everybody over 18. Mm -hmm. You do have to be 18 to qualify as a vulnerable adult. A vulnerable adult, again, is somebody who has some kind of impairment, whether it be medical or physical, that affects their ability to provide for their activities of daily living. Mm -hmm. Their dressing, eating, feeding themselves, shopping, transportation mm -hmm. issues, those kinds of things. Um, what we ask for people is you kind of look for red flags. Mm -hmm. Is the person um, used to be very social, used mm -hmm. to be very active in their church or in their community, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden someone's moved in with them and you don't see them as often. Uh -huh. Or when you ask them a question that normally they would answer for themselves, they're looking to their caregiver, they're looking to this other person to answer for them. So they're withdrawing themselves. Um, let's say they have unexplained marks or bruises. Mm. That, oh, to say that, well, I, I you know, I, I ran into the door. A door doesn't have knuckle marks. Wouldn't create a slap mark on the side mm. of the face. Mm. Well, we talk about fingertip bruising, where someone is grabbed, they'll have a bruise on their arm, and if you take your hand and just lay it on it, your fingertips will naturally go right where those dark bruises are. Mm -hmm. Someone who's, um, let's say, used to dress very nicely, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden their clothes are ill-fitting or dirty. They're just, you see that change. Um, your neighbor, who used to never had a problem with their electric or was quiet, took care of their yard. Now all of a sudden you see their powers off all the time. The yard is overgrown, mm -hmm. that people are in and out of the house. When that, it just wasn't their style of living before right. this other person moved in with them or, or started taking control and helping them. Got it. So, you know, I think it probably falls under the thing that they often tell us in a lot of cases, if you see something, say something. But I guess, what if you're just not, you're not sure? You know, because I, I think most of us, um, I can tell you how often this happens. We'll be at a Helping Seniors uh, a booth at one of the um, a senior expos, because uh, we always try to have a, a, a presence there. And somebody will come up and they'll say, okay, it's good to know that you guys are here. They'll say, I'm okay. You know, we're all, we're all right. We don't have any problem. But there is a lady just down the street, and she seems to be all on. And then they're, they're very concerned. And, and so they say, I want to take this because I may want to give you guys a call about it. It's not necessarily about abuse. It's just about they're concerned, is the person getting fed or things like that. But I guess there's a question is that most of us, <clears throat> we're sort of concerned about maybe getting involved or sticking our nose where it doesn't belong. How, how would you advise somebody when's the right time if you're just not sure about getting involved? We also have, besides abuse, neglect, and exploitation, which is what we call second party, mm -hmm. we also have self-neglect, okay. which can be that the person just is unable uh -huh. to do these things, maybe has lost a spouse okay. or that person that used to help take care of them. Um, so we do have special conditions cases where we can go out. With Adult Protective Services, it's not we don't prosecute anyone. The idea is that we go out and stop the abuse or neglect, mm -hmm correct it, help the person correct mm -hmm. it, and move forward so that it's not occurring in the future. So even if that's someone who just doesn't have services or doesn't know how to reach out and get services, mm -hmm. that might be going out and getting them a service referral, connecting them in with someone like helping seniors, right. or maybe a companion service, or maybe sure. a transportation service, sure. or a church, or some other agency that provides those kind of companion services or those assisted in transportation services for them. So it's about that whole person. Mm -hmm. And not so much to worry about, you're not accusing anybody mm -hmm. of, of doing something. If you have proof that somebody's doing it, 911's the call, That's right. because that's who's gonna prosecute that. If you have a feeling something's not quite right and this person needs help, the abuse hotline is who you call because we're gonna go out and investigate for you and a lot of times it may be just giving them services. Right. It may be the caregiver is overwhelmed yes. and can't 
you know, it has too many people to care for, maybe caring for an elderly mom and some children. So it may be just getting them services to assist them. So it's not, again, about an allegation that somebody's doing wrong. It's about somebody needs help. You know, it, what you're saying makes so much sense because I know we get calls all the time from people in very uh, difficult situations. Um, it's, it's pretty common that Joe will field a call from someone uh, who may be trying to get by on five or six hundred dollars worth of social security per month, and they're making decisions about whether they're going to eat or have medicine. And I can't tell you how often uh, we've been able to make a difference by providing what to us might seem to be the simplest piece of information, but to them it's it's life changing. We've had calls from people that simply did not know there was a Meals on Wheels program. Period. And and I'm sure that's been your experience. So what, I guess one of the questions is to get somebody away from being afraid about giving a call to 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 uh, the the um, to the DCF line you know i guess they're afraid that uh, uh, you know maybe somebody's going to come in and remove this person from their home and now they're going to be forced to live someplace they don't i think we all imagine those things but that's not really what happens is it not at all that's um last resort really mm -hmm. um we go with the premise of least uh, restrictive uh -huh. emplacement that when we go out to see somebody the first process is get them services in home, uh -huh. get their service provider, or, or get the, their caregiver services in the home to help them stay in their home happy and healthy. Okay. If that's not possible, then you have the option of independent living, where mm -hmm. they can go and have their own apartment in a senior facility, right. which provides some services to assisted living, which is a little higher up. You can still have your own car, come and go as you like, right. but they're there to disperse your medications or help you with other things. And that call button, if you should fall. Right. All the way to skilled nursing. Skilled nursing, you have to have that need to be yes. placed into that kind of facility. Yes. And there's a lot of different pieces. You can't, I love it when somebody says, my, my son threatened to throw me into a, a skilled nursing facility. Well, you know, you can threaten all you want. Your doctor's got to sign There's off on that. And you've got to have a need. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I just can't pick you up and go drop you off at the door. That's yeah. not how it works. Yeah. So in trying to find out if it takes a little bit of service to keep you, we always tell people, accept a little bit of help, especially with people who are having trouble, let's say, cleaning their floors. Then let those services come in and help you clean your floor because that's going to keep you from hurting your back or hurting... Um, doing something else, slipping and right. falling. making it worse. <laughs> or if your spouse, uh, partner needs help bathing, yeah. that's where most um, accidents occur in the bathroom sure. when somebody's wet and slippery. Yeah. Get a, someone to come in and help bathe that person because that leaves you available to not get hurt, to take care of all those other things that person needs, and to arrange for services for them. Reach out and get a little bit of help, and it keeps you in your home much longer. No, and that's a good point. So the viewer should really understand that the point is to keep you safely at home. It's not to to create a problem for you. So so the question we wrote down is mom and dad won't do what we think is best for them. What should we do? How, what, what should we do? <laughs> well, if, if you have concerns about your parents and them being able to care for themselves, it is a call to DCF. It is to the, to the hotline, the 1-800 number. We'll go out and evaluate. And again, it could just be they need some services in the home. But part of going out to determine if somebody meets criteria to be a vulnerable adult mm -hmm. is we do what's called capacity consent for services. Okay. Does this person understand what their needs are? Mm -hmm. Do they understand how their needs are being met or not being met? Mm -hmm. And are they able to make those arrangements for themselves mm -hmm. or with a little bit of help get those arrangements? There are some times that um, Children and other family members have unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. of how mom and dad should live. Mm -hmm. All their life, mom and dad have lived this way. Well, now the kids don't want them to live that way any longer. Right. They have the right to live that way. We live right. in a free country. Yeah. So sometimes it's us defending someone right. against their family saying, mom and dad understand that. Or we understand dad spending money, you know, going out where you don't want him to go. Right. But it's dad's money. Right. And if he understands that if he spends all his money, he won't be able to pay his rent or, you know, get food for himself, then dad has the right to do that. Because, again, he's an adult. Right. So sometimes it's expressing, you know, we're going to determine, does this person understand what their needs are? We're going to give them information. But they, if they have the ability to make their own decisions, they can tell us, I choose not to do that. And we have to say, okay, well, here's the information if you change your mind. Right. But, you know, 
thank you for talking to me. And well, we leave. That's a whole interesting uh, discussion because I guess one of the questions is if we're a person, I always have this expression in Brevard County because, um, and I say this statistic a lot because I, I think it is eye opening to people who have not heard it that in Brevard County, literally one out of four people is over the age of 65, and one out of two by AARP definition is over the age of 50, which ARP would say, now you're a senior. So I will say in this county, you either are a senior, you love or care for a senior, or Lord willing, you're going to become a senior. <laughs> so you might as well start That's learning this stuff That's now. So so yeah. when should we start making arrangements for uh, for facility placement or when, when, when does it become like nonsensical to try to stay at home? When you can't care for yourself or when you're in a caregiver position and you're the person you're caring for, needs that 24-hour care. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do a job 24 hours a right. day, seven days a week. It's impossible. And that's, we'll see caregivers that get burnt out and accidents will happen because they're tired. Mm -hmm. Or you have mom who only sleeps now three or four hours at a time because of a disease process mm -hmm. she's in. Well, you can't just sleep those three or four hours. There are other things to do when they're sleeping. So they're getting up when you're trying to sleep. Right. That's when you need help. When it comes to where you can't get the help into the home to keep them healthy and mm -hmm. safe at home, then you need to look for f a facility placement. And we always, especially when somebody, let's say, has been diagnosed with a disease, let's say Alzheimer's type mm -hmm. dementia, before that person completely becomes disoriented, you need to get them into a facility so they can establish some memories there. Mm -hmm. So when they wake up, that's a comfortable place to be. Sure. Instead of waking up and being frightened every time they do, because right. this is new, I don't recognize where sure. I am or these people. It's that kind of memory imprint. Right. You want to make sure they have that. But I would much rather go pick out a facility and say, this is where I want to go mm -hmm. if I need it. And I've done that. My husband has my whole list. Okay, okay. Because I know, I know what kind of, um, we have them from a, a small home where they have three or four people there. Sure. To ones that look like great big fancy yeah. hotels where you get to live like the prince and the princess. Yeah. And if that's what you want for your senior years, we have it available in our community. Yeah, no, this is a fascinating place for, for having resources for seniors. So, but here's a question now. I, li I like this question we wrote here. Who is responsible for the care of, an, of a vulnerable adult? So now the situation is maybe uh, DCF Adult Protective Services has gone in to look for a person. They've determined that this is a vulnerable adult. But then, then who's responsible at that point? How, what, what happens next? There's a lot of answers to that. Okay. A lot of family members think that just because their family, well, I have to say a lot of um, parents think that just because they had children, that makes their children responsible for them. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, as an adult, you're responsible for yourself. Sure. But if you take on a caregiving role, if you do this service, let's say you have a neighbor, and every night you take that neighbor dinner mm -hmm. to the point where that neighbor relies on you to bring them dinner, and if you don't bring it, they're, they're not going go to eat. They're going to go hungry, right. Correct. If you are going on vacation, then you need to say to them, I'm going on vacation, so you understand I'm not going to be here for X amount of time. You're going to need to make other arrangements for dinner. Can I help you do that? You just can't go away mm -hmm. because you've made this person rely on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, a child that's been taking care of mom or dad, and now mom or dad is not doing what's in their best interest, or the child themselves has their own issues, mm -hmm. or their family has needs mm -hmm. more of their time, you need to sit down and explain, mom, dad, I can't do this for you anymore. Mm -hmm. Let me help you get someone who can. And once that's explained and you clearly say to them, I can't do this, then you are in fact saying, I can't be your caregiver. Right. You have to give someone notice. You just can't stop showing up. Okay, okay. And then um, I guess the question is, maybe it's related to this, is then suppose that you're the, you're the, uh, the, you're the person that feels like you're in that position, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be the caregiver, but this is getting out of hand because the situation is progressing or something else. Who do you call for help? That's a call to DCF. Okay. for us to come out and assist you if the person is resistant to going into a facility, mm -hmm. that we can get services in there and explain to them why it's important. If someone is unable to get out of bed, the, the possibility of decuitus, which is bed sores, mm -hmm. begins. 
And no matter how much you love that person, if you can't get them out of bed, we're going to see some skin breakdown. Mm -hmm. Well, that can lead to very serious injuries and um, diseases and viruses and other things that can eventually kill the person. Mm -hmm. So if you're unable to provide those services that person needs, the best thing you can do is get them somewhere where they can get those services. Mm -hmm. And in the event you have to place your mom or dad or a loved one into a facility, visit often, mm -hmm. visit at different times of the day, know the names of the staff who care for them and make sure they know your name because those are the people who get good care. Yes. It's the people who are left alone and nobody checks on mm -hmm. that you'll see those stories about. Mm -hmm. But if, I, if you have a visitor, when you go in to a facility and you see something, say something. Yes. Be it to the person who's supposed to be uh, st giving the care or to their supervisor or their supervisor's supervisor. There's a chain of command and you follow it. And that's how you keep that promise that mom, I'll take care of you, is make sure you, you get them the best care possible. And that's just by being involved. If you're not doing the hands-on care, then be their advocate to get the best care for them. You know, uh, what you're saying, you know, as, we, as we've been going through this, is that there really is a whole side of thinking about this where uh, to a great deal of, 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 of thinking about it is DCF Adult Protective Services would not actually be something to fear. It would be something that is really designed for helping the person in, in need. Because again, like I said, I think too many people assume like, well, if I, if I do call the, the hotline uh, to ask about this, you know, now I'm going to relegate them. They're going to put them in. And, you know, we don't know the terminology, so we just go, oh, it's the old folks' home. That's the only thing we don't, we don't understand the differences. But it's really not that at all, is it? No. Um, it's about getting resources to assist a person. And some of those old folks' homes are looking pretty good. Oh, they're, it's they're a whole different nice. world. It is. A whole, <laughs> it is. We, we, we have this conversation all the time because um, at, at Helping Seniors of Brevard, um, we, f we find out uh, there was a group that I was actually doing tours of, of some of the senior facilities here because the, uh, the, the guy who ran that program, he said, you know, he said, Kerry, he said, nobody wakes up on a random Saturday afternoon and sa or Saturday morning and says, let's go out and tour some, some assisted living places. He says, you never do this until you run into the emergency that causes you to do this. He said, but what if you could back that up and instead of making what might be one of the most dis important decisions of your life, where you're going to live for the next you know, 10 years or whatever it's going to be, uh, why do that in, a, in the middle of an emergency? Why not take some time like you would picking out a house or anything else? And so part of the analogy is getting people past what we all have in our mind of our grandfather's or grandmother's, you know, quote, old folks home and understanding that it's a whole different world with this today. Well, there's a whole difference between, uh, let's say, a skilled living facility Absolutely. where people need 24-hour hands-on care and supervision to some of our very active yes. assisted living and independent yes. living. Um, more and more they're doing um, wine Thursdays where you yes. can go out and have a wine and cheese party and meet the residents and tour the facility. Or they'll do movie night or they'll do a health yeah. expo on their grounds. It's amazing. It's a good way to go out and, and visit the facilities around you and, and see. Most people say, well, mom's getting older. She doesn't want to be a social. Uh, I, if mom was social when she was young, she probably wants to be social when she's older. Yeah, this is a whole dis this is a whole separate discussion because I can tell you uh, how many times that we've seen people who um, who who thrive when they get into that kind of an environment, much to the surprise of everybody from the day. I can't believe this is that same person, but we just have a couple of minutes left, and I wanted to talk because you guys are really work hard so much in the community and, and you're really an unsung hero that people, uh, they should know your name and, and know, know the kind of work you do because in addition to everything that you do with DCF and the Adult Protective Services side, you're also involved in this campaign to make sure people are aware of, of uh, elder abuse. So you're, you've really championed the World Elder Abuse Awareness Days, not only in terms of the community fair that you've helped organize for all these years, but also you put on seminars about adult safety and things like that. And then you're part of the Vial, of, you've been instrumental in the whole Vial of Life program, keeping uh, our first responders, giving them a way to know what's going on with a senior if they have to respond to the home and don't, don't know what's going on. I, we have just like a minute and a half left, but I wanted to say, how do people get more information? What's a good way for them to find out about all the things that are going on? Um, coming out to the World Elder Abuse Festival on June 
14th this year at the Melbourne Auditorium. We try to provide an array of service providers there and service agencies so people can just come out and see what's available out there. She talked about we do the seminars now. DCF, law enforcement, and the fire department, we're reactive. Mm -hmm. We're not proactive. We're reactive in what we do. So that was the whole issue with doing the world elder abuse and the whole set is that we're going to be proactive, proactive right. and give education. So that's what our seminars are about, giving people education to be financially stable. When is it time to retire? When do I know I can retire, not have to go back to work? If I have to go back to work, where's the best place to work? Sure. So in answering all those questions and just... You know, when is it time to make a power of attorney or a durable power of attorney sure. or a living will? So getting that information. So we, what I try to do is listen to seniors, take kind of a consensus of what they're interested in, and then try to put a seminar together or the vial of life came about. Brevard County Fire Department's mm -hmm. been doing this for four years. It was kind of a, a issue, they are an initiative they were doing. And then I hear the hospitals and healthcare providers are worried about when people go to the hospital, if they don't have good information, right. they're not getting the best care, so they're not coming out with everything they need. So getting them all involved and understanding that. So now we've got 10,000 of these vials out in our community, and at every health fair, you can go by and fill one out with somebody and have it in your home or in your car. So many good ideas. Uh, we really are out of time, but I want to encourage you, viewer, to visit HelpingSeniorsOfBrevard.org because you're going to find a television show that was recently recorded about the Vital of Life program. It gives you a lot of instruction and information about this free service that could save your life. And then also, I want to make sure that you viewer find us on Facebook uh, at Helping Seniors of Brevard because you'll find every time that uh, Teresa and her team put together a, uh, uh, an event that's coming up, you're going to find it on the Helping Seniors Facebook page. It may be other places, but we keep a calendar so you'll know the places that you can get good senior information. Well, thanks for joining us today. It really has been an informative show. And thank you, viewer, for joining us here on Helping Seniors TV. Thank you for being a community partner with us. Absolutely. We appreciate it. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our Senior Information Line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses, and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You're always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.